The first cable we are going to connect to our power supply unit is the 24 pin ATX power cables. Later on we will short it so that we can start the PSU without having it plugged into the motherboard. The next cable we are going to plug in is a 4 pin Molex power cables. This is the cable which will provide power to our water pump. This is a short adapter. We are going to plug it in the 24 ATX outlet. This will allow us to start our PSU without powering all the components in our build. Using a 4 pin Molex outlet, we can now safely plug in our water pump. It is important to note that we are going to use deionized water. In case of leak, this water won't be conductive and therefore minimize the chances of arming your components. Alright, let's fill in the reservoir. First, gently remove the cap and then just fit it in all the way to the top. Before starting the pump, I am going to place some absorbent tissues um, over the sensitive components of our build. If an obvious and major leak happens when we start the pump, it will minimize any impact. Okay, so this is a moment of truth. This is a moment where we switch on our PSU. And as you can see, all the water is gone. It really is important to fill back the reservoir as soon as you can, simply because if you were to let your water pump pumping just air, it probably would burn out after several seconds. And slowly you will see that your loop is going to fill itself with water. What I'm doing right now is putting on and off the PSU every 5 or 10 seconds. And that really helps the pump to add some pressure into the loop and making sure that the water is circulating everywhere. And finally, make sure to keep filling your reservoir as the water level slowly goes down. Alright, let's take a closer look at our loop. So what I'm trying to do here is to remove all the bubbles of air which would be trapped in our water blocks or radiators. And the best way to do so is again to put off and on your PSU to increase and decrease water pressure. This will help you get rid of most of the bubbles. And for whatever is remaining, um, you'll probably have to wait it out through the leak test or even the operation of your machine. Uh, the system is very good at draining itself from the remaining air bubbles. So now I'm going to quickly inspect our loop to make sure that there are no obvious leaks. And if we are in the clear, we can go ahead and fill in the loop with some coolant. On any given custom loop, um, the good dosage to have is a quarter of coolant for three quarters of deionized water. And the coolant we are going to use in our particular case is a colored one, a blue pastel colored. At this stage, I'm not going to put a lot of it because I just want a little bit of color through my loop so that it helps me spot any kind of leaks during our 24 hours leak test. Alright, again, so far so good. So now we can close the reservoir and, well, just wait it out. Keep the pump running, other than that, shut down everything and let's come back in 24 hours. Yep, 
yet another moment of truth. I don't see any obvious blue spots on the absorbent tissues, meaning that my loop is completely watertight and that our loop is officially completed. You'll notice that the water level in our reservoir uh, went down a little bit during the night. So we're just gonna go ahead and top it up with only coolant. Now we can finally close down this reservoir and continue our build. But before we do anything else, make sure to shut down and unplug your computer. In this next step, we are going to finish connecting our PSU to our PC. Let's start with our PSU CPU cable, then our PCI Express cable for our video card, and finally our SATA power cable for our hard disks. It is now time to remove the short plug from our ATX outlet. Now this case is particularly good when it comes to cable management. Keep in mind that every one has their own habits and every installation is different. Therefore don't feel too bad if you're not following the instructions on the screen. First go with what makes sense for your assembling. And before I forget, you can see that right now I am going to connect our power SATA cable to our hard disk drive. Okay, so now let's go back on the front side of our case. We are now going to connect our 24-pin ATX plug to the motherboard, our solid-state drive SATA cable, as well as our 6 plus 2-pin um, PCI Express plug to our video card. Our final two plugs. The first one will be our thermometer sensor plug. If you take a quick look at the left corner of your screen, you will remember that we have placed the thermometer sensor on the water pump. The thermometer sensors on your motherboard are usually very well hidden. We have three of them on this particular model. Please make sure to follow the polarity of the plug. If you don't, you're going to break something. All right, the second plug. This is our water pump PWM wire. This particular sensor will allow us to monitor how well our water pump is working. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to connect your fan splitter uh, Molex four pin plugs to the power supply. You should have a couple of them. I'm just showing you how to do with one of those, but make sure that both of the fan splitters are connected. Last and final note, talking about cable management, you will see that I have removed all the wires which were resting on the floor of the case. This is just an extra precaution I'm taking in case of a major leak. Last thing we are going to do here is just to put back in place the top, front and back panels. 